So this is soft space. It's an augmented reality workspace for designers and researchers where you can see the full shape of your ideas. At least that's what it says right here. What's up guys? Welcome back to The Construct. We're gonna check out soft space. I didn't cover this one in the last video. My apologies, but it's something you need to see. So it starts off like this. <laughs> one of the cool things you can see here is they're trying hand occlusion. They're kind of using that outline, letting your hand show through. So to start you off, they give you this kind of demo here, right? Where we have windows that are already created, but check this out. <laughs> I can actually grab this like X and Y axis and move it around. Very, very minority report kind of, kind of thing going on here. But hold on, let me pull this in where it's readable. The clarity is super impressive. It's super clear, but check this out. So you hold your hand up like this, you get a menu, and then there is uh, themes, which is basically just how dark the smoke is around this, but you can go completely, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. That might be clear, that might be it, right? So now we can kind of see my environment in the same space. You can kind of throw it and then pull it back. Again, this is neat, but I don't know how much work you can get done in it. I don't have my keyboard connected. It must have missed the connection. I do have my keyboard nearby. Without the keyboard, you do have the option of the virtual keyboard. One of the things I noticed about this virtual keyboard is how crisp it is. It kind of actually puts you in mind of the Apple Vision Pro's keyboard a little bit. Um, there's voice to text. You can close it right there. But you can actually take some of these elements, scoot them around, and actually kind of make a vision board, if you will, right? You can edit all of these things. These are all just demo props. This little grab bar here at the bottom looks very, very Apple. I don't know about you, but that looks, either they took it from Apple or, you know, I, you know I'm not pointing any fingers here. So it's kind of like one of those vision board apps like, like we've seen, you know, kind of like Notion or Millinote where it's just more of like a space to create things. Now it does let you open up a browser. So I opened up Google here earlier. So I can type, search the web. Now, unfortunately, I went to YouTube. It says full screen unavailable. So that's because this is a browser that YouTube doesn't recognize, so it's not gonna allow me to fill up the screen. So there's some definite limitations in this app, but you can see the potential. I think that's the coolest thing about this app. You can see if this can be done inside of an app, Meta could certainly get this done inside the general UI for the headset. So the keyboard works with it. I won't go through that. This is just a really quick video. I wanted you guys to see it. You do have to sign up, you have to enter your email address. I tried to do it with Google and it froze, so I don't recommend you do that, but you actually have to have an account, but you can connect your Dropbox to it. So you can pull in PDFs or images or whatever that you might have and bring it into this kind of like idea space. My biggest gripe with this is that, I mean, I know we all have to make money as app developers, but there's actually a paid plan. It's free to do a hundred items, which I think this demo has a hundred items in it. And then there is a $40 one-time purchase to have unlimited items. It's not bad, but you really have to have a plan for how you're gonna use this before shelling out 40 bucks. For me, it's just kind of neat to, to show people like what's possible here, being able to pull through all of these windows. One of the cool things, whoa, like it's too close for me to grab the, there we go. So one of the cool things that I noticed was that these windows are somewhat on a plane. So every set of windows is like on a layer. So if you see the window back there, if I just click it, it'll just bring me to that plane so I can see it. And then I, I'd have to, you know, push back. You can use this with the controllers, but they suggest you just use your hand. So if I wanted to move this particular text box, just kind of show you what that looks like. You see how you can kind of see a grid for one layer and then you can move it back a layer or move it closer and then just stop. So it, it's kind of working, this grid pattern that you see on the floor, it's kind of working on that grid pattern. It's really cool. The pointing is a little awkward where it's like a flashlight. So I have to 
if it hits something behind it, I know I'm like close to hitting the, the layer in front of it so I can grab things like that. I don't know guys, I'm not sure what you think, but it's a neat trick. It's, it's a really cool app to show people. I'm not sure how useful this is, but it does get me excited about what Meta might do in the future in the UI update. And as we start to normalize spatial computing, we have a lot to look forward to. Something else that was a little weird. At this point, using spatial computing that is like so common now, I'm so used to being able to grab the edge of things. That's not an option in this app. So you still have to use, you know, your your pointer and just grab it by this bar. There's no there's no touching the actual surface of these tiles at all. I give them I give them props though for trying to do hand occlusion. You can see my hands are a little bigger than the outline, so it doesn't really work out, but I, I give them uh, I give them credit for that. Good shot. So you can find this in the Quest store. It's absolutely free, except for that 40 bucks if you want more than 100 items in your workspace. I can't say that I recommend this app, but it's pretty cool to look at, and it gets me really excited about what's possible in spatial computing. It's a quick video today, guys. I just wanted to show this to you because I missed it in the last video. Shout out to this guy here for bringing it up in the comments, and I'll see you next time in the Construct. Peace. I should be able to like, say if I really, really like crunchy, melty Ritz crackers, I should be able to like pick this up and then start like an idea board. Yeah, like that. So it, it looks like it grabbed the JPG right from YouTube. What else can I do with it? Uh, I don't know. So I can just have a picture here and then what else? New topic. So I guess I could connect that to this. Yeah, there we go. I love Ritz crackers so much. Then we could basically Processed foods are delicious. Boom. It's our first idea, guys. There it is.